Hello guys, Bashar here with uh, uh, another Diablo 3 video for you. As I said, I have conquered 150 solo and I want to share my journey and experience with you and also try to help you conquer it. So, the build I'm going to show you is a very classical build, uh, the Gears of Dreadlands Demon Hunter. Uh, so, what you basically do is, you know, you use your primary skills right you, you shoot your primary skill you gain momentum momentum will give you a lot of uh, movement speed you stray firing that primary skill and finally you get a lot of primary skill bonus and you utilize some stuff that will make your your uh, progress better you want a hunter's wrath which will make your uh, primary skills increase speed and increase damage as you can see my secondary is not so good but now it's fine uh, you want hungering arrow bonus on all the slots that are possible to have hungering arrow but does the belt not have it? that's a mistake that should have been rerolled into hungering arrow I suppose I just left it that way because I never went this high right so I'm gonna I do about great is 125 fast it can go all the way up to 150 but Marauder is the path of least resistance if you want to do it with a Demon Hunter. But, you know, the correct role would have been to roll that uh, percentage life into Hungering Arrow for more damage. So you want Hungering Arrow on legs, Hungering Arrow on the uh, Quiver, and Hungering Arrow on the belt. Uh, you want to use Buriza uh, because you freeze them and you guarantee critical hits against frozen enemies. You want Dawn's power, or you want Vala's bequest power, or you want Fortis Ballista, which is creates shields when you hit them for higher uh, levels of uh, Great Rift solo. You can do that. So you use uh, Ninth Series Satchel. Uh, I use my Primal upgrade. Uh, on the ninth series actually because there is a lot of variants there you use focus restraint uh, you use skirts necklace which is kind of the classical amulet and you also use ogre's power set uh, you can use the guardian set when you are on lower paragons and you can actually do all at once even uh, you kill the hunter's wrath uh, you do two pieces of guardian uh, five pieces of marauder and two pieces of I think you could do it I'm not very sure could you that will be four pieces of marauder though no I don't think you can I don't think you can do all three sets at once and obviously royal, royal ring of grandeur is cube so uh, for armor we want depth diggers basically double damage for us ring of royal grandeur and for lower speed runs, you want Vala's Bequest. For higher great rifts, you want uh, Fortress Ballista. Uh, the gems are simply strength, obvious. Right? And my Bane of the Trap will be uh, on a laughable level. I will explain why. We want Taegook because we will be doing Stray Fan. Uh, that will give us Taegook's proc. And my Bane of the Bane of Trap is a classic for any solo build. And the reason that it is slow is. This is just a gem that I have been leveling for uh, Kaldazan's Despair. I actually have a 150 version on the Wizard. Uh, when the stuff is real, I just use that, of course, as you can imagine. We use Ogil's Power Set for lower, as I said, we can use Guardian Set for additional dexterity and vitality for survivability. Our skills are Hungering Arrow, Devouring Arrow. We want this because the 9th series satchel. Uh, makes the pierce guaranteed and allows us additional uh, things. So, straight drifting shadow for more movement speed and fast runs. Uh, some people use the. Uh, it was a weapon? I mean, there is something that gives the drifting shadow room to the strafe. If that happens, you use Rocket Storm, you use Wolf Companion. And for higher grade lifts, you can change this into fan of knives, bladed armor for additional armor for survivability. Right? We have preparation focused mind, which gives us 
uh, more discipline instead of instantly over time. We have small screen, small screen special recipe, uh, reduces the cost. And we have Vengeance Dark Art, this is a Demon Hunter classic. And let me show you the build. On higher grade rifts, maybe you could prefer going for diamonds instead of emeralds for you know, more survivability. Let me go 120 and 25. 120 should be relatively easy. And you generally want to stay invulnerable most of the time, if not all the time. And you just stay far away from everyone. Ooh. That was my mistake, I should have refreshed it. And you should maintain your momentum stacks, of course, all the time. You should also not allow the Dark Heart to expire like I just did there. I shouldn't be fighting anything other than that. I'm a little bit lost I haven't played it for a few days. I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have. A uh, Wolf Companion should be used on Epic's uh, edits. Epic's head. Okay, we have a shine. Yeah, I have been playing not very idealer to be polite on myself. Lots of mistakes. So guys, you with this build you are not vulnerable very often. I mean you generally just want to spam the smoke screen as much as you can. Here we have channeling. As you can see, the build is really, really fast. And if you have your Alter Max, which you should, you should be uh, doing a potion at the beginning of the dungeon, combined with uh, Templar's uh, emanating Cloud Bonus. Oh, I did die. Uh, I didn't even see what I died with. That was a little bit embarrassing. Okay. Okay, we got a Burizo drop. How long? Two minutes and five seconds, yeah. Pretty bad. But I did die and make a few mistakes. And depending on the rift, guys, it can also handle even... I think I can even handle 130 pretty decent enough. Let me see. On Demon Hunter, what did I do? See? Uh, not very good. 330. Not that good. I mean, let's also do a 125. I should be a little bit more warmed up now. But that is about it, right? Uh, and also, guys, we are missing out on a good 25% damage here. So guys, this is a speed build, so you should, I mean, the, the one I made, I will show you. Uh, I should be playing it a little more correctly, I thought I saw the hit there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The blunders, the blunders, infinitely many blunders. Okay, you should try to get in those zones, those are uh, the beautiful zones opened by our Oculus. Curtis of our dear Templar. 85% damage up. Uh, what you generally want to do with this build is, guys, you want to abuse the pylons. You are a very fast build, extremely squishy. What am I doing? And the damage is a little bit up. Wow, I did die again. Okay. So you are very squishy no matter what, uh, 
what you wanna do is you know, find the pylons and you know, make use of those. Like so now we should be clearing everything relatively fast. Try to stay away. There is a reason for that. I will show you. We have the archery passage that gives us a lot of damage. This wasn't a juggernaut, you know, it wasn't. I wonder why it survived that long. Look at that reflect damage. I suppose the 25% damage from that should be this complete now. You get the cheat death mechanic from the Templar. Oh, I don't think I have the shrine thingy on this one. Actually. Let me just finish this. Three minutes, yeah, bad. So the thing is, guys, of course, you know, dying also wastes a good amount of time. Uh, I can do this in two minutes with the gem and, you know, when I properly play and when there is not a large amount of bad luck involved. Okay, let me show you the passage now. I need to go back. So these are the passives, archery, ambush, call the weak, and steady aim. So guys, uh, you can use you know, tactical advantage to be faster instead of that. You can use awareness to be a little bit on the safe side. I just, you know, go for full speed build. I do have the tactical advantage from my Buriza. And you want Dawn to be somewhere to reduce the cooldown of uh, Vengeance. So the thing is, guys, you might have noticed how very close it was for me to do the Vengeance. So guys, Vengeance has a 9 second cooldown, and this reduced the cooldown by 64%, bringing it down to approximately 30 seconds. Right? And the duration is 20 seconds, which means I need another 33% cooldown reduction to make it work. Uh, but I am rounding optimistically here. So this is barely enough, right? So the cooldown I will have is going to be... You guys can see that. So my cooldown is 18.67 seconds, right? And my duration is 20 seconds. So if I'm careless, which happened a lot, uh, the it can expire. But you want the cooldown reduction to be around this level, right? So you can be permanently in Vengeance because Vengeance also gives you 50% damage reduction. The character becomes extremely squishy when you are out of it. That's why I died. I probably let it expire. So that's about it. Uh, and it can go all the way to 150 as you can see. And but there is also this, the casual amount of 8,000. Yeah, and they have a lot of Primals, I don't have a primal. A prime rather than this many. See, Molas request. But they are using diamonds as you can see, and they have a bit of cooldown reduction here, as you can see. And thing is, guys, you cannot add up your cooldown reductions, okay? Never take a look here and say, uh, you know, 12.5% here, 7% uh, here, and 7% here. 26.5 percent no right that's wrong that's not like how it works because thing is uh cooldown reductions get added get applied separately let me uh say make an example you know let's say we have a cooldown of 100 seconds right then we have 20 percent cooldown reduction and we have 30 percent cooldown reduction so the way it gets 
you could think you know the cooldown is going to become 50 seconds right nope that's not what it gets applied first we apply the 20 percent cooldown reduction and we can apply the 30 percent as well it doesn't matter we apply 20 percent cooldown reduction it goes down to 80 seconds then we, we apply the 30 percent reduction then the 30 percent gets applied to 80 seconds right and that is 24 seconds so the cooldown becomes 56 seconds and let me do the other way around so you know you are convinced it works both ways the 100 per second cooldown gets reduced by 30 percent that goes down to 70 and then we reduce that 70 by 20 percent which is 14 that's 56 seconds right doesn't matter which order you apply them right but but thing is and there is a six second six percent loss there right and thing is what happens guys if you do it multiple times over and over eight percent eight percent twelve percent twenty percent ten percent right the loss becomes very big right and the game just tells you how much it is uh by adding everything up so i have 42 percent here 12 percent from the helmet uh, seven percent from the shoulder seven percent from the glove eight percent from the ring and eight percent from the quiver so that is a little bit too much right as you can see the other fellow was using it a little bit lower but you kind of want the uh, i mean you should you can use the smoke screen guys so for example you do your thing right i mean values is about to expire and you have maybe one second of your vulnerable phase there in that one second you can do the smoke screen and then you can make it so right so the cooldown can be a tad bit lower than what is required right so as you can see i can very barely do it right it expired and i was able to do it so there is something that's wrong with my calculation Back. and 90 seconds cooldown 64 percent cooldown reduction and then oh, oh, oh i think i got what i did wrong okay 42 percent cooldown reduction means Oh, that's what I end up with. That's a little bit interesting because it doesn't feel like one second. Let's take a look. So, guys, I should be having a window of one or one and a half seconds to refresh it, right? It should be available and it should not have ended. Let's just take a look. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. so the calculation is not very wrong but you can do with a little bit lower than that so you can actually survive if your duration if your cooldown gets the down to like 21 seconds right let's just do one more calculation this is a little bit too much calculation i know i'm sorry no no no, no. 90 times okay let's say 30 percent cooldown reduction yeah that's a little bit risky we want a little more so 22 seconds guys which means uh the cooldown will be 22 seconds and that will be a tad bit risky maybe 35 percent would cut it though uh so that's about it the build right we let's take a look at the templar uh i didn't go so you want uh thunder fury on him so you want the uh, movement speed and attack speed reduce uh, you want definitely oculus uh, which will create those yellow areas in which you can do 85 percent more damage we want the unkillable uh, token relic and you can easily obtain this by doing legendary upgrade from the cube right there are only three anyway we 100 percent want the ms braces so we can get those uh, champion uh, champions to spawn from the pylons this can be useful not a big deal and when you port they can't interrupt you and you take lower damage and this is another must thing right pylon effects last twice as long everything else is just this is for additional gems not that required i'm using the heal uh, the, uh, 
the loyalty, the charge and guardian. So guys, there is one thing we will see this in the visit because I did go do properly with the Templar there. Uh, the cooldown reduction on Templar works for the heal only. So you cannot reduce the cooldown of these, but you can reduce the cooldown of this one. And his strength increases the size of the heal, and he gets a 2.5 multiplier uh, for strength, right? So you can give him uh, a thousand strength, and he gets 2,500 strength of it, and his scaling ends up at uh, 25,000. So basically, you have to give him 10,000 strength if you want him to operate at peak efficiency we will see this on the wizard yeah uh, you can also use the enchantress for faster runs i'm just to use the templar but enchantress can also be used so that's about the build guy guys and i will do two more i will do one more for the support demon hunter and finally i will do uh, maybe one or maybe two more for the wizard uh, for the tal Russia build and for the build that i have cleared 150 with I will see you in those videos. Bye-bye.